Okay, so let's get started. And I'm going to be working on this section here of his jeans. And I will also, this is mostly done, his hat and his shirt is mostly done, but I will um, show you how I created um, this rough texture and the smooth texture here of his shirt. But with his jeans, um, you want that denim look, you want that, how denim has that um, real specific weave to it. It's, um, it's a type of, denim is almost like a canvas. It's made out of cotton and it's, the fibers are woven together in long strips. And so you want to demonstrate that and that's gonna take these long pencil strokes. And I just use a real soft touch. This is an HB pencil and um, I just use a real soft touch to create that and you can go back and forth but you want to make sure that that pencil stroke is going in the direction of the fabric weave that is key uh, that's also key with fur is you want to make sure that your strokes go in the same direction that your fur does and so I'm just going to keep working down around his knee where the fabric would bend and then go straight down here. Now, as you can see, I've done that here in this leg, and I've even um, changed some of the fabric texture lines here in the, these creases, like up here, and I will actually make it look like it's a little arched here, just to create that bump in that fabric. Now, I'm gonna come back through here with a blending stump, if I can find me one here. Um, with a blending stump and hopefully this doesn't have color on it and just soften that just a little bit and same here I'm just going to soften this and just blend that in so it kind of makes my pencil lines not look quite so defined and it just gives you that illusion of that texture now with the shirt this was all very much in shadow, and I used actually more of a circular stroke. If you can see the tip of my pencil here, I'm using a really um, small circular stroke, working that darkness into that, that graphite down into each the tooth of the paper, and that way you don't see those strokes. That's what gives the softer appearance of the jersey knit. And then I'm also gonna come back through and blend this and you can't really see much difference here because so much of this is really dark I actually used like an 8B pencil on this to get it that dark and now with the um, hat texture I'm gonna grab a piece of scrap paper here real quick and um, just take that right over here and this paper has a little bit of a tooth to it anyways it has just a slight texture to it and I used a darker, a little bit darker pencil here. Let me see if I can find um, a darker. This is about a 4B that I used on the hat. And a 4B lays down really, really pretty dark compared to uh, the 2B. You can see the difference in the darkness of the 4B pencil. That's what B means is black. You have a 4 black versus a 2 black. And I just really carefully went through and just made almost like what they call crosshatch lines, which is one goes one direction, and then you bring the other one in the other direction, and you cross those lines. And I'm just kind of back and forth, or even, um, you can even pick your pencil up. I kind of, if you can do the back and forth, I think that works just a little easier. And up and down. And I let the tooth of the paper, the texture of that paper, work to my advantage to create that textured look, that ripply, ruggy, you know, that plasticky look. And these hats have a weave to them that are more of a, a cross. So I made sure that my across lines were more definite or defined than my up and down lines. Although there are, there are some up and down lines here but mostly I made sure these 
across lines were more defined or what stood out more. And I just let that tooth of that paper work, work for me in that favor. So rather than really push that color down into the tooth of the paper to fill all of it like I did in the dark places, I let it stay textured and, I, and then you could blend this out, but I really didn't blend that in, out any because I didn't want it to look soft. I wanted to leave that rough, coarse look. So there you can see as I lay it down just a little darker how much texture that paper really has. This is um, a hot press watercolor paper. It's called Fabriano Artistico. And even though it's a hot press, which is usually a smooth paper, it still does have a little bit of texture. And this paper is actually made on a screen. So when they lift the pulp of the paper up out of um, the water where they, how they make it, it has that screen texture still embedded in the paper. And that's really what I was going for here was to let that screen texture of that paper work for, for me, work to my advantage. So I just made sure that I used the direction that I wanted for that hat weave and I just put my pencil, you know, made my pencil go with that direction and let the tooth of that paper do the rest of the work. I really, it really, um, I was surprised at how simple that was to create that texture. I was a little kind of concerned about it, but the tooth of that paper really did the work for me. So just a couple little tips there on how to create some different fabric textures. And um, I think that's about it. I hope that was helpful and we will see you guys next week. Thanks.